and suddenly there was a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting and it appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire sat upon their heads. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. So glad that you're tuning in with these programs and learning the Word of God. We've been doing a series since the beginning of this year out of the book of Hebrews chapter 12. And today we're going to be teaching on being restored. We were teaching a little bit about that the last two programs. But my text for today will be under Psalms 51.12. And we, the three words that the Lord gave me the beginning of the year was revive, restore, and drain. And God revives the heart of the humble. He revives the heart of the contrite ones. And he begins to restore you unto the Father in himself. And I'd like to pray for you today. Father, I thank you for the viewing audience. I thank you for every family, every child, every household. I thank you, Lord, for the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ entering their heart, entering their home, Lord, bringing a healing into their soul, their spirit, and their physical body in Jesus' name. The last program, we're teaching out of the book of John about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and about Jesus' life giving for a holy sacrifice for the sins of the world and the resurrection of Christ and about true repentance before God and how it's Jesus Christ and Him alone that is to be the center of your life. There's a lot of people that go to church and come out of church and they have bitter roots inside of them. They're drawn away by their own lust and enticed and that bring us forth sin. They have not repented before God. Their heart is not centered around Christ. It's centered around their own religion, their own denomination. And said so the body of Christ has to repent of the doctrines and the teachings of men, the philosophies and the opinions of men that have made his word of none effect in their life. It's coming to the person, Jesus Christ and him alone. It's falling on your knees before the Lord and crying out for mercy and forgiveness. laying aside every weight and sin which does easily beset you. Running the race, looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Faith only comes from the Word of God. Faith comes from the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. He is the living Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word was made flesh, John 1, 14. We beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God was manif manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentile nations. Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant, the covenant of the blood of Jesus. There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man. Not a man, the man, Christ Jesus the Lord. Jesus said, except you deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. Identifying with his blood sacrifice, 
that his soul was poured out upon the cross for your soul. And the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. His blood was shed to remit your iniquity and transgression. See, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They were deprived of the glory. The Ten Commandments shows you the knowledge of sin. If you broke one commandment, you're guilty of all. And the Ten Commandments cannot impart righteousness to you. It shows you that you're guilty, you're under sin, and your need to be reconciled to God through the faith of the blood of Jesus Christ. He is the Son of the Highest. He is the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. He is our King. He's coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is the Almighty Son of God. The Almighty Son of God. He is bodily sitting at the right hand of the Father of glory. And all power has been given unto him in the heavens and the earth. And under the earth. Every name is going to bow down. Every person will bow down and declare Jesus Christ as Lord. To the glory of God the Father. There's no other God beside him or before him. He was before all things. He declares the end from the beginning. He was here before the foundations of the earth. He was here before he spoke to Abraham. He's God Almighty all by himself. He obeyed his father. He came into the world. A body thou hast prepared me. He was born of a virgin. Born under the law to redeem those that were under the law. He is the resurrection and the life. He that believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He is the expressed image of the Father. He declared the Father. In John 17 he says, I and my Father are one. He received the commandment of his father to lay his body upon the cross and take it up again. He told his disciples and apostles, I will meet you in Galilee. That's after his resurrection. He appeared to his apostles and disciples 40 days before he ascended to the Father. This is Jesus, the Son of God. It's about fellowship with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. It's not about your denomination. The fire of God's Spirit is released when His gospel is preached in truth, not mixed by man's opinion, man's doctrine, and man's teaching. Jesus Christ is Lord. See, there's a lot of old wineskins in the body of Christ. They have to repent of the doctrines and the teachings of men. The, the opinions and philosophies of men have made his word of none effect. There's no power in your words. There's power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's power of the Holy Spirit. God's word came with power of the Holy Spirit. Demonstration of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God came with power. They said about Jesus when he began to preach, his word was with authority. His word was with power. Unclean spirits came out of people crying. Those unclean spirits said, Thou art the Son of God. They knew who he was. Jesus ejected the devils out of people. Spirits of infirmity. Spirits of pain. He healed all that were oppressed or under the rulership of the devil. But Jesus spoiled principalities and powers. He made a public display of them at the cross, triumphing over them in it. The Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, sin and death. 
It was manifested to take away your sin. Now he sits at the right hand of the Father. He sent the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, upon the day of Pentecost. He told his disciples and apostles, go to Jerusalem and you will be endued with power from on high. Luke 24, 49, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. Acts chapter 1, 8, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And then they watched him ascend to the Father. The angel said the same way he is going to heaven is the same way he's coming back. There is a day that there's going to be a shout of an archangel and the trump of God will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first and those that are alive will be caught up together with the Lord and they will ever be with the Lord. For the Lord is coming back for his church. His church will be a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. It will be full of his glory. It will be full of a church worshiping and magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ, not living for themselves, but living for the Lord Jesus Christ and his holy gospel, being a witness to nations of the world. The Holy Spirit will be confirming the word of God with accompanying signs and wonders to those who are the true blood-bought Christians. Christians. Christianity without... Christ is i -anity. It's all about you and not about him. So it's a returning back to your first love, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's many watching today and you have backslid in your heart. You have back, backslid in your heart and you set the word of God aside. You've gone your own direction. You're living for yourself and you feel miserable inside. Do you know it says in the gospel, or excuse me, in Hebrews chapter 12, that God corrects those that are his. But those that do not receive chastisement are illegitimate. They may say they're a Christian, but Christ is not living in their heart. They had ianity. It's all about religion. And it's not about Christ. When Christ comes in, there's a conversion inside your heart. There's a love for his word. There's an honor and respect for his word. There's a love and honor and a fear and reverence to the will of God. Jesus said, if any man does my father's will, he'll be like my mother, my brother and sister. When you're truly Jesus' brother and sister and mother, you're, you're surrendered everything to the father. You surrendered your heart. Every part of your life is for the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's for the one who gave his life for you and rose again. To me to live is Christ and to die is gain. The Bible says absent from the body is present with the Lord. When we leave this body, our spirit will come into the presence of almighty God. We will see Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The joy that was set before him, he endured the cross for you, despising the shame. We're living for him and his holy gospel. We're denying ourselves and taking up our cross to follow him. This world, this life upon the earth is like a vapor. It's here for a while and it's gone. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? There's nothing that you can give. If you gave all, everything to the poor and don't have love, it doesn't profit you anything.
The commandment of God is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength to love thy neighbor as thyself. If you truly love God, you'll love your neighbor. If you say you love God and you hate your brother, how does the love of God dwell in you? He that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. The love of God is totally different than humanity love. The love of God is when your heart's been circumcised by the Spirit of Christ, no longer living your life for you, but your life is centered around Jesus Christ and him crucified and the power of his resurrection. As the Apostle Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. The life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave his life for me. Apostle Paul was once a persecutor of the church before his conversion, hauling men and women into, uh, men and women into prison, at the death of Stephen, when Stephen was preaching about Jesus Christ, Stephen was a deacon in the church, full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost. He stood up for the Lord and preached. And Saul of Tarsus, before he became the great apostle Paul, was there at consenting to the death of Stephen. And Stephen's face shone like an angel. The Spirit of God was all over Stephen when he preached. And he prayed, Lord, don't let this sin go to their charge. They stoned him. He gave his last breath, and that was his breath that he prayed that prayer. And I believe that prayer was answered for Saul's conversion. Then Saul had letters in his hands to go to Damascus to the chief priests and elders to haul men and women into prison. And the Lord himself shined brightly above him, a bright light brighter than the noonday sun. It's in Acts chapter 9. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. He was made blind for three days. The Lord spoke to Ananias, a disciple of the Lord, to go and lay hands on Saul. He said, he's a chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentile nations, and the children of Israel. And he will suffer many things for my sake. And Paul received a vision, that, or Saul received a vision that day and saw Ananias coming to him. When he laid hands on Saul, the scales came off of Saul's eyes. He was converted to Christ and baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the, he went back preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified in the power of the resurrection. The gospel that he was destroying before, now he's preaching with boldness and power. And God imparted wisdom and revelation into Apostle Paul. And he was made a minister by the Father of glory and Jesus Christ. He was made a minister of the dispensation of grace. That is by grace you're saved through faith. Not of yourselves as a free gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Saul was converted in his heart, a circumcised heart. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Pharisee, a teacher of the law. And now he is saved by the grace of God. 
going to the Gentile nations, preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. He received the revelation from Jesus Christ of the hidden mystery of Christ, which is the indwelling Christ, the Spirit of Christ's Son coming into your heart. He preached the gospel of the indwelling Spirit of Christ. Jesus himself bodily is at the right hand of the Father, but he poured out the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost, the indwelling Spirit of Christ. And Apostle Paul says it was, he preached my gospel. That gospel was the gospel of the indwelling the indwelling spirit of Christ that was hidden before the foundations of the earth is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. Saul was restored and became the apostle who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament and he suffered great persecution. The same persecution he gave to the saints of God at Jerusalem before his conversion. Now he was suffering persecution. All that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Jesus clearly stated that you will endure persecutions. They hated me without a cause, Jesus said. They hated me and my father. They persecuted me and my father. See, when a person does not have any word of God in them and they do not have the spirit of Christ in them, they will persecute true believers where the spirit of God's son is dwelling in their heart and the word of God is in their heart and life. That's what Saul did to Stephen. He was persecuting the spirit of Christ that was in Stephen because Stephen, when he preached the gospel, he was preaching Christ and him crucified the power of his resurrection. And see, when a person begins to persecute others that are living epistles of Christ with the word of God coming out of their heart and mouth. They're persecuting in their own heart of unbelief and ignorance. They're persecuting out of their own stubbornness and rebellion and pride. That's what Saul was. He was full of pride prideful of that he was a teacher of the law before and that he humbly came to Christ and in the the epistles he said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection That's why he said, to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. There's going to come a day when a person comes to the end of their life and the Holy Spirit is convicting the heart of that person of the sin and rebellion they've had before the Lord. If they repent and turn away from their sins and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and him alone, he is the one that will save your soul and deliver you. He will heal your soul. He will put his spirit within you and you will be born again. Born of the incorruptible seed, the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The corruptible seed was the sin seed that was passed down from Adam's transgression. The Bible says all have sinned, fallen short of the glory. 
They were deprived of the glory. It's by His grace you're saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's a free gift of God. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. The joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. He gave his back to the smiters. They plucked out his beard. He was pierced through on his, his hands and his feet. Crown of thorns upon his head. The lashings upon his back the piercing in his side. He bled seven ways. That's seven is perfection. He ever perfected you before the Father in himself. He came to deliver you from the wrath to come. See, when we reject Jesus Christ and his holy sacrifice, reject the resurrection, we will stand before the Lord on the great white throne judgment and give account why we rejected him. He was the expressed image of his Father to deliver you from the wrath to come. The wrath of God is upon the unbeliever. And God is calling all sinners to repentance. He came to save sinners. And Saul was one of the chief sinners. He says, I was a chief sinners of all sinners. I was a Pharisee of all Pharisees. He was a teacher of the law, but he had to repent before God. And now God mightily used him and raised him up to be an apostle. And he preached the faith of Jesus Christ and him alone. You're justified by faith. You're justified by the faith of the Son of God who loves you and he gave his life for you. This can be a brand new day in your life by surrendering your heart and life to Jesus Christ and openly identifying with him and him alone. God bless you for watching. Times of refreshing. God bless you. Thank you. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.